Hello there ladies and gentlemen, how are you doing? It's Alexander Hilly 123 here and it's time for a new video. And it's time for a new series today. And as you can see, I'm playing none other than Resident Evil Village. This is the Xbox Series X version. And for some reason the very nice music that plays in the background here has stopped, so I'm just going to restart the game again. Because as always, I like to talk for a couple of minutes before beginning the game. I just want to say, first and foremost, this is the best Resident Evil game since Resident Evil 4. Fuck the haters. And I'm not sure whether this is going to be a let's play or a walkthrough. I'm just going to play the game and we'll see. <laughs> but if it's going to be a let's play, I need to watch the cutscenes. If it's going to be a walkthrough, I need the gameplay to be good. Fact of the matter is, I've completed this a few handful of times now. I've got it on the PS4, then I bought, obviously, a Series X. And I wanted to play this on the Series X, being a huge Resi fan and got nearly all of the achievements slash trophies and we're just going to see how it goes right now i don't need to know if this is a let's play or walkthrough we're just going to have fun this is a really fun game every video is going to be 30 minutes in length we're recording this in 60 fps ladies and gentlemen because this game is in 60 fps playing with ray tracing off and if you're on console as well with a controller, you're gonna wanna turn off this piece of shit here. Camera and aiming camera acceleration because it, it's just horrible. It's just horrible, trust me. That's all I need to say. Ray tracing off because it's not quite fully 60 FPS when you've got it on. But this ambience, ladies and gentlemen. A lot of my favourite kinds of survival horror games have got this fantastic main menu music that just fits the narrative of what happens in the game. And this is another one of those. And like I said, I wasn't a big fan of Resident Evil 7. I think it's boring. Resi 5 and 6 were way too action-focused and they've completely turned in the other direction. I don't think this game gets enough praise for its level design. I like the variety of enemies. I like how over the top and silly it is, but I do prefer the story. The game looks fantastic, the engine's great. There's an upgrade system finally that means something for the first time in a long time. Yes, there's a lot more combat. There are certain parts where it gets too combat focused, but overall, this is my favorite Resistance 4, definitely. A lot better than 7, and I guess it, it depends what you want from your Resident Evil games. There's backtracking in this game. There's a a few puzzles here and there, the easy kind of puzzles and the Resi games we've become accustomed to, but I like the backtracking. My favourite area of this game is after the castle, and you use the valve and you use the crank and you get all these additional items, and it's just satisfying to get resources that way. And finally Capcom have started to understand that, <laughs> because they didn't with Resi 7. That game, Madhouse, was just not fun. It's permadeath, and it's a shame that there's no permadeath on this game, because it would have been fun. But Madhouse was just stupid. And this is coming from a guy who loved, you know, battling Akumu and grounded and hardcore, you know, and old school Evil Within and Last of Us and Dead Space, respectively. So, in the next couple of years, we're going to get a lot of playthroughs on the channel, guys, which I'm excited about, like Alan Wake 2 um, and uh, Callisto Protocol and the Dead Space remake. So, I'm hyped because I'm going to be doing my playthroughs blind on the channel. Okay, so, one of the issues I do have with this game, though, is yet again Capcom have shit the bed when it comes to the hardest difficulty. Survive the unsurvivable. And, of course, there are people out there who have indeed completed Village, Village of Shadows without New Game Plus weapons, but have a look online, and nearly everybody is playing with the Infinite Stake Magnum. It shouldn't even be allowed to play and get the achievement on New Game Plus with an infinite weapon, in my opinion. And I'm sick of this happening with modern gaming. If somebody isn't good enough to complete the game on its hardest difficulty, they don't deserve the achievement slash trophy. I haven't got it yet because I've seen how stupid it is. Capcom, oh, we'll discuss it later, but hardcore difficulty is fun, fur, and challenging. You die quickly. You can craft in this game, and on hardcore, you get just about the right balance to fight back and survive, but not have lords. I like the balance. This game isn't perfect. I'd still only give it an 8 out of 10. 
But uh, yeah, we're not doing Village of Shadows because it's just dumb. Like I said, look online, everyone's playing with the Infinite Magnum. Why? Could you play a New Game Plus on you know, the games I just spoke about on their dif hardest difficulties? No. But anyway, hardcore, let's go in for it. And i am decided we're going to watch the cutscenes. Long ago, a young girl went with her mother to pick berries for her father, who was hard at work. But the forest greeted them with a dark, cold silence, the bushes empty. Yet determined to find the berries, the Rasko broke free from Mother's grasp and vanished into the trees. Mother's worried cries faded fast as the girl ran on, over vine and under branch, and into the forest deep. Feeling strange eyes upon her, the girl recalled Mother's scary bedtime tales, and her throat became bone dry. Then the Pat Lord appeared. He greeted her warmly and bit his own wing. Come, child, quench your thirst, he said. So she drank the thick, dark blood and smiled with joy. Passing through the graveyard, menacing storm clouds loomed, and the air turned bitingly cold. The girl was shivering in her thin clothes. Then a dark weaver appeared, and with a click of his fingers, crafted mist into a beautiful dress. Come, child, warm yourself, he coaxed. So she clothed herself and smiled with joy. Across waters deep and ominous she went, hoping a boat she found would carry her home. But hunger's grip tightened and her heart grew heavy. Then the fish king appeared and offered one of his many fins. Come, child, eat your fill. So the girl ate and smiled with joy once more. Continuing on, she soon entered the forest's dark heart. Then an iron steed appeared, bearing a beautiful golden gear. The creature said nothing as the girl approached and snatched what she thought was another gift. The horse grew angry and summoned the other monsters. Terror filled the girl's heart as the wild wind rose around the beasts. Suddenly, a witch appeared, dark yet regal. Gifts we gave, but more you took, she snarled. So more in turn is due. In a blink, the girl was trapped inside a mirror. There. She's asleep. What is with the creepy story? She's only six months old. Woman at the store said it was traditional. <laughs> a local tale. Besides, Rose doesn't seem to mind. Because she doesn't understand it, thank God. We moved here so that she wouldn't have to deal with any of that, remember? There's nothing wrong with my memory. You're just being paranoid. It's not... Never mind. I'm sorry. But I'm not paranoid. I'm just cautious. Then, go cautiously take your daughter to bed. I'll finish dinner. Your mother doesn't want to remember it. I can't blame her. She nothing. I'll put her down. Obviously, we're watching cutscenes and whatnot, but I'm not going to be examining everything here. And also, I will be talking about the story as we go on. So, needless to say, this game's been out a year. I will be discussing spoilers as we go on. So, you have been warned. Don't be a freaking moron. You should be expecting spoilers. This isn't the first player for, of course. You're there. It's like I said to your mom. That book's too scary for you. Mia, the ultimate insane waifu, ladies and gentlemen. Almost there, honey. Gotta say, this game's engine is absolutely ludicrously good. There is an achievement for kicking this ball into the bedroom, though. I do appreciate that. There you go, sweetheart. Don't you worry. I'll be right downstairs. Daddy won't let those weird fairy tale monsters get you. 
And when I did Max Payne a few weeks ago, and yes, Max Payne 2 will be coming later in the year, ladies and gentlemen. Oh my God, this movement. Jesus. What an engine. Oh my Lord, this is nice and smooth to play. Um, ooh, pardon me. That Coca-Cola is repeating on me. Yeah. The volume was a little bit too high, in my opinion. Hopefully, it'll be a bit better here. I always have trouble in this echoey room getting the balance right, but it should be okay. But anyway, certainly hope Mia doesn't get blasted in a few minutes. It would be a shame, as we enjoy this glass of red. Is she okay? Sleeping like a, well, like a baby. Mm, that smells good. What's that? Oh, hands off, mister. It's chorba de la gum. It's a local recipe. Wow, you've gone full native, haven't you? Mm. Local wine, too. But if you're gonna keep sulking all evening, maybe you shouldn't have any. You really have to stop worrying. It's just finding you in Louisiana, the pregnancy, Chris moving us here, military training, it all happened so fast, you know? Well, at least we're all together. You... Me, Rose. Now, everything's gonna Seriously, be... Seriously, think we can just forget about what happened in Louisiana? It happened so long ago. I just, I don't understand why you are so... <sighs> Surprise, motherfucker. Mia, get down! Mia! Go on, move! All clear. Rose? What the hell are you doing with my daughter? Back him secure, sir. Take him away. I said get your hands off her! Ethan, no. Okay, so it's like I've said in the past, ladies and gentlemen, the rule 101 of survival horror. The game has to start agonisingly slowly, with not much happening in parts 1 or 2. And that is definitely the case with this game as well. Hey, Doc. Hello, Mr. Winters. I got your daughter's results back, and I'm lucky we come in to talk about that. How about the next test before coffee? No problem. We'll be there. That was the Doc. She'll see us next week. Hey now, think positively, all right? We talked about this. I know. We hardly talk about anything else. I keep telling you, it's not Rose that I'm worried about. Well then what are you worried about? Look, she's gonna be fine, I just know it. What else matters? We matter, Ethan! You matter! You just Mia, what are you talking about? Is there something you're not telling me? Come on, talk to me. Damn it. I have to take this. This game making me glad I'm single, ladies and gentlemen. She. But yes, we're going to be walking slowly soon. Another trope of survival horror. And these kind of games, you have to spend a bit of time where you're walking slowly and you can't go at full speed. Just the way it is. 
Some things will never change. What's your status? the package safe? What are you talking about? Where's Chris Redfield? And Rose? So there's been a crash and we are free to leave. What the hell happened to you? And we've got control, finally. Now, there's definitely a good chance that I could get wrecked, which will stop this being a let's uh, sorry, stop this being a walkthrough. If I'm gonna do a walkthrough, it has to be of a certain quality, but in the early game of this game, it certainly doesn't pull any punches and the village part where you've got to hold out and survive, that fucked a lot of people up, man. Uh, that part was insane. It's obviously meant to replicate Resi Fuwa with the intro with the village. But that game did it perfectly. This game, I think if people played the game on normal, that intro would have worked out just right. But on hardcore, whew, it took me a good hour and about, I don't know, I'd say a half dozen failed attempts before I got it, finally. But it made me nearly regret going on hardcore. But for a first playthrough of this game, if anyone is wondering, I would go hardcore instead of normal. But that intro, whoa. It's tough. But one thing I like about this game is through the early cutscene, that's showing you the story of the game, even if you don't know it on your first playthrough. Uh, Ethan getting cut there is also showing why he's healing himself all the time with, you know, an unrealistic amount, kind of. And obviously, with a Japanese survival horror game, you just brush it off and think nothing of it, but then you recall the events of the seventh game and you understand why he's able to do that. It's the crows. You can shoot crows for money in this game. That already makes it better than Resi 7 in my opinion. But yeah, the early game. Oh my lord, the werewolves. The, what they called the... I can't remember what they're called. <laughs> I'm just calling them werewolves because that's what they are. The way that they move around so erratically. Oh my god, they're annoying. I'm not going to lie, they're annoying. But a lot of my favourite games... Kind of like the ones I mentioned at the start of this video, and many others similar. It's hard to be apathetic about them. They've always had strong feelings, you know. I've always had strong feelings of enjoyment, but also frustration during my first playthrough of all those kind of games. And if I was apathetic to them, that wouldn't be a good thing. So, I think you know what I'm saying. But we've got a very spooky intro here, very reminiscent of Resi 7. Overall, I think this game's pacing, yes, it's more action-focused, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing. Resi 7 is very boring, and I hate the, ste the stealth. I hate the stealth aspect in the Bacon house uh, where Jack's unkillable. And... I don't like unkillable enemies all through the game. You know, back in the day with Resi 3, Nemesis wasn't unkillable. And then Resi Remake 2 makes Mr. X unkillable. Jack Baker's unkillable. It's like, ugh, it's dull. Obviously in this game you've got the Lady Dimitrescu. And yes, that's what we'll be naming her as. Because that's how you pronounce it, ladies and gentlemen. The U is not silent. And the Three Sisters. A lot of people have criticised that because the bosses are easy. But... I like the fact that you kind of repeat the same fight three times in a row, but every time it's just a little bit different. And they're all like mini bosses, you know? I really appreciate that. I think it's quite unique and cool. And now we can sprint, and now we can vault over things as well. I do like games in a third person perspective where you sprint with the left bumper instead of the left trigger. Or, or the left analog stick, I should say. Where the hell am I? Look at these visuals. <laughs> oh my lord. But yeah. Apparently this game is still getting a DLC and it's a year exactly since this game was released as I'm recording this and next month it's Jeff Keighley's Summer Games Fest obviously we're in a post E3 world now E3 doesn't seem to be a thing anymore but Nevertheless, there's going to be some announcements in the next year and... Sorry, in the next month. And I'm wondering if the DLC is going to be announced. I'm surprised, though, I really am. If it happens. The fans are clamouring for it, and I don't think Capcom made it initially, but apparently now it's going to happen. 
and obviously Resi 4 remake there's an outside chance that will be showcased too but yeah this area not only do I like backtracking through it later I like how it changes progressively as the game get, gets on you know for the early morning probably like this part of the game now and then what happened afternoon and then the sunset and then the night time and the level design just changes as you go through it that's some old school resi bullshit right there and there's quite a lot of additional like side content in this game that you don't have to do especially after the castle area where you can explore and there's actually quite a lot of exploration in this game and anybody who knows me will know that I love linear games more than any other kind of game and in this day and age there's less linear games than ever but I don't mind an open world game but some games that are a mixture of open and linear can be the most frustrating but this game does level design really well it's one of its best aspects no no friendly friendly who are you? Who sent you? Nobody. There was an accident down the road. What's going on? Oh no. They're coming. Who is? English farmer with an American accent in Romania. Please tell me you have a gun. No, why would I? Take it! Take it! Tell me it's out there. Hey, are you listening? Hey! Wreckage. Get shut off. Going deeper underground, ladies and gentlemen, it's like JK said in 98. But I'll tell you something, there seems to be far too much panic in this town. Wait, there's more. We've got 20 bullets. I am going to predict that I am going to die to the first enemy because honestly, it's really difficult. Because that guy is moving around like a maniac. Jesus and the, the, the aiming in this game, it's purposefully difficult. Just like other survival horror games. The aiming is meant to be like that. It's meant to troll the fuck out of you. So yeah, it's a very, very tough opening. Just like I mentioned before with the regenerating. Forgot where my handgun is equipped to. Is it to the left or... Oh, I'm not even equipped to it. Yeah, it's equipped to the left. So, I think one of the things about a potential like permadeath difficulty on this game would have been the fact that this guy could easily kill you immediately. So they probably would have wanted to tweak the intro of the game because this this guy is tough. And I'm nearly stuck there already. So the Guardian, I think, works a lot better on this game than in Resident Evil 7, purely because of the emphasis on more gunplay and the action. Look at that. I'm, just, I'm sure this guy's got a lot more HP though than normal enemies and I tell you what he's not fucking dead I'll tell you that much okay so as you can see yes we're out of ammo yes that looked like a shit show but show me someone who's done that perfectly 
And, well, they're probably the best gamer ever because that is tough. We're playing with a red reticule here and not a white reticule because I like having it red because white is obviously not going to stand out against the snow. But you know what? I'm happy how that went overall. As you can see, we have taken quite a bit of damage, but no, it doesn't matter. I would not have been surprised to have died to the first enemy. I will not be surprised to die in here. I will not be surprised to die in this village part. Like I said, this opening to the game is tough as hell. Christ knows what it's like in Village of Shadows. Some people, I know Jigsaw Killer, one of my favourite Resident Evil content creators, he did Village of Shadows legit. And I hate to do the hardest difficulty, like with New Game Plus and all that shit. I don't want to do that. But yeah, what you're going to be seeing on this playthrough is somebody who knows aspects of this game. But I'm certainly not expert and uh, I'm not great at it. So it should be fun for you guys to watch, I hope. So I really enjoy the crafting on this game. It's as simple as can be. But I do like it. Okay, so I can probably take one or two more hits before I'm going to have to heal. We only need to kill one enemy here. Now you can use the knife to swipe at the enemies and do damage. But yeah, I don't know, man. I just feel like it's not worth it. I don't know when the guy spawns in either, and I'm certainly not going to waste any bullets on these fucking idiots hanging outside. There he is. Oh, a proud bald man, huh? Get that reloaded. Fuck off. Uh, dude? Trolling me. Okay. Give him a minute. Give him an inch. He'll take a mile. Okay. Off with his head. We get a herb. And there we go. We can heal straight away. Oh. Make a new heal. We've got one bullet. Woohoo! Welcome to survival horror. Bit awkward, but you know what? Over. I don't mind these first enemies. I think I got more HP than the other enemies in the game. Hello. If there are any survivors out there, come to my to Louisa's house near the fields. Survivors. survivors? <laughs> so that was the easy part. No, for the hard part. And I love coming out of here. Oh. These lads are all waiting for us. Love watching people do this. I absolutely adored Core Carnage's first play through this game. Very immersive. He's always the guy for the big occasion for me. And uh, yeah, that was really fun. Oh shit, that was a lot from the other side. But ladies and gentlemen, every video is going to be 30 minutes. So I think it's been a pretty decent start overall. And if you'd like to see how this village section goes and whether I can do it on first attempt, because it's surely not going to be easy, then you'll have to watch the next video. Woohoo! This game's pretty damn cool, man. See you in part two.